Hi guys, I'm Oren from TravelingIsrael.com and this video is all about helping you plan your visit to Tel Aviv and the main things you need to know in order to understand and enjoy the city. I will start by saying that what stands out most about Tel Aviv is that it is not Jerusalem. Nowhere else you will find two cities that are so close together, only 60 kilometers, 37 miles apart, yet so different from one another. Jerusalem was built thousands of years ago on a rocky hilltop terrain, Tel Aviv just a century ago on the sandy dunes along the beach. Jerusalem is one of Israel's poorest cities, Tel Aviv one of its richest. Jerusalem is Israel's political and religious center, Tel Aviv its economical and commercial hub, and the differences continue. Jerusalem has extreme religious elements, while Tel Aviv was voted one of the best gay cities by the LGTB community. Jerusalem is a city of the past, while Tel Aviv lives in the present. But Tel Aviv is not just the antithesis of Jerusalem, it also has a lot to offer on its own terms. So let's have a closer look. Generally speaking, Tel Aviv can be divided into three parts, the center, south and north. The south is poorer, but probably the most interesting part of the city, where most of the historical sites are located. Jaffa, the ancient port city, the flea market, Neve Tzedek, the first Jewish neighborhood outside Jaffa, the American colony and Florentine. In the center of Tel Aviv you will find the Carmel market, Nachalat Binyamin, Tizengoff Center, Sarona, Rabin Square, many Bauhaus building and the Tel Aviv Art Museum. In the north is the Tel Aviv Port, which is a shopping and party area, and Tel Aviv University, where you will find Better Futsot, the Museum of the Jewish People and the Rabin Center, and of course Tel Aviv's most important asset, the Promenade, stretching right across the city from Jaffa in the south to the Port of Tel Aviv in the north. One of the great things about Tel Aviv is that it is tiny. It takes about a 20 minute bike ride to cover the distance between the south, the port of Jaffa, and the north, the port of Tel Aviv. Unlike other cities, such as Berlin or New York, where you need to take the metro to move from one neighborhood to the next, here you can get from the Carmel Market to Neve Tzedek or Rothschild Boulevard in a 10 minute walk. Everything is nearby. I've written about some of the main sites on my website and if you are planning to visit Tel Aviv, you can purchase my Tel Aviv booklet which will lead you through most of the important sites. If you can, you should avoid driving in Tel Aviv, it's really hard to find anywhere to park. And let's just say that the Israelis drive like the Italians, not like the Germans. If you are using public transportation, the most important thing to know is that the central bus station in Tel Aviv is one of the ugliest buildings in Tel Aviv and the area isn't great either. I wouldn't advise female travelers to go there alone at night and it isn't too pleasant in the daytime either. The good thing is that you don't really need to go there if you need to get to a hotel or hostel, then the best thing to do is just call them and ask how to get there. Chances are that you won't need to go through the central bus station. There are four train stations in Tel Aviv and they are supplemented by a lot of buses. Hagana station is in the south, very close to the central bus station. Ashalom is in the middle of Tel Aviv and has a good bus connection. Savidor Center, which is also in the center and has a good bus connection. Next to it is the bus station called Arlozorov. I think it is the biggest bus terminal after the central bus station. And from there you will also have buses going to most of the places in Israel. From there you have a bus to Jerusalem, line 480 every five minutes. There is the station in the north, Tel Aviv University. In Tel Aviv bus lines four and five go from north to south and are very useful. There are also Monit Shirut, which means service taxi. This involves a 10-seater shared taxi that runs along the bus line. They are a bit cheaper than buses, but the best thing is that they run on the weekends when there are no buses. 
If you take a regular taxi, make sure the driver is not ripping you off. Travelers often complain about this. So if you have internet access, it is also good to open Google Maps or Waze, the app that the Israeli use, to check the driver is going the fastest way. Telofan is a great way to move around the city. It's a city rental bike service. There are stations spread all over the city and you can use the bike for half an hour at a time. There are a few things you need to know. The most important thing is that you need a credit card to use them. I will leave a link to their website here below. Most of the big hotels are on the beachfront along the promenade, Hayarkon Street and Herbert Samuel. In the last 10 years, a new trend of small boutique hotel in the inner neighborhoods has sprung up. Accommodation in Israel is not cheap, but fortunately there are also some great hostels, all of which also offer private rooms. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. All the links for the places, hotels, hostels, my booklets I will leave here below. Now everything you've seen in this video I filmed in one day. It was Friday in February and now I will do something that is very hard for a tour guide to do and I will shut up and let you listen to how Tel Aviv sounds on a regular weekend. Enjoy! <laughs> Thank you.